Well, I thought about this all night, and the more I thought about it, the more I was convinced it just wasn't going to work. Uh, one of the pins turned a little bit. And, uh, you know, I could live with that. But look what happened. Here, see, what I did was push one side of the pins all the way through the metal, the steel of the handle. And then the other side of the pins, I butted up against them because I wanted, I didn't want my joint to be inside the steel. I wanted my joint to be just on this side of the wood. And what happened was, that one of the handles through the course of clamping, and uh, it didn't happen in the first 10 minutes because I checked this pretty carefully. So, so, I will not do that again. And those pins are, by the time I get them to the house, they're about 60 bucks, which is a ridiculous amount to pay for pins. And there's no saving this. Well, I mean, there is. Uh, I've got a lot of time invested into the knife itself. So what I'm gonna do is uh, on my metal cutting bandsaw, try to go just on the edge of this wood between the wood and the steel on both sides. Uh, I'm gonna clean it up with some sandpaper. And uh, I do have, let me see, I think I have some iron wood left. Yeah, I have two pieces, two pieces of iron wood left. And uh, I can use, let me see, do I have some mosaic pins? Yeah, I have just enough. Yeah, I do. I have uh, some mosaic pins that I can use. And the man who this is for has already given me $200. And uh, if he wants it, Doug, if you want this for uh, $200, uh, I'll get this put together with the desert ironwood and the mosaic pins. And here's what the pins will look like. They're not, it won't be a Texas edition, but uh, it'll still be a beautiful knife. And this uh, desert ironwood is the same, it came off the same, what it was was a block this big that was 12 inches long. So I cut it down the center and cut it in half. So I got two knives out of this. So I'm not into the desert ironwood, the uh, 65, or I think it was 69 to the house, that I was for that, which I bought that originally for yours, and then I realized I'd bought, bought it too small, so I bought another piece. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and work on that knife and get it cleaned up and new wood and mosaic pins put on, and I'll put it together, and if you want it, you can have but if not i'm just going to keep making it and uh i'm not going to buy texas pins anymore it's just there's no way i mean to have them texas on one side and uh would it what would it be uh zach set on the, on the other side zach set you know texas backwards <laughs> so uh yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. It is a huge waste of pins, and uh, now it's a huge waste of time. But now I know. I mean, it was, uh, you know, this was a first, and it was a learning process. Now, uh, a good thing has come out of it. I know that I, see, I have this etcher here, and the directions that came with it are very, very vague. And, uh, you know, I even watched their video on their uh, YouTube channel. And uh, it wasn't very clear to me. So a lot of times the only way I can learn stuff is to just do it and ruin a few things and then figure out what I'm doing wrong. And that's what I had to do. And I finally got it right. There's definitely a difference between etching and marking. And what I was doing was etching for way too long. And uh, by the time I got a nice BC Blades logo etched all the liquid had leaked out from underneath the, the little silk screen thing and it was it just ruined the blade around where the logo goes 
So I figured out what I want is something called marking, not etching. So anyway, I figured out how to mark my logo on there. It's under the tape. And uh, I got that figured out. I won't be able to do that on all my blades, but I may do it on some of my bigger blades that have enough room up there to do it. Uh, probably not on my mirror polish blades because uh, I don't want to ruin the mirror polish or ruin the logo. You know, there's just no way to do both. So anyway, over to the bandsaw. I'm going to do this right now so I can stop being disgusted and uh, see if I can salvage this. Well, I got one side cut off and it looked like it was going to work out. And uh, I could put that on the sander and sand off what, uh, you know, sand down to the metal. So I put it on this side and things were going good. And then I started seeing metal chips up here. And I turned it over and realized that I wasn't cutting straight. So I have ruined it. It's, it's gone. There's no saving it, and uh, I thought, well, maybe I can at least make, you know, a smaller, a different knife out of this. But I've already hardened this, and I won't be able to cut it unless I anneal it. So uh, maybe I'll just finish cutting this and set it to the side, and when I'm not so disgusted, I'll uh, maybe I'll figure something out to do with it down the road. So, Doug... I'm starting a new one, and uh, start from scratch. Okay, back to work, everybody. And on the wall of shame, you go. Maybe I should call it the wall of learning, because <laughs> you know that's what it's all about: making mistakes and learning from them. Okay. Alrighty. Uh. All right. Deep breath. Back to the drawing board. Man, it is one. I got here pretty early this morning. Well, not so early. I, I got up early and intended to get out here early. But uh, it rained for a couple hours really hard. And uh, we only have one umbrella, big umbrella. And if I bring the big umbrella down here with me, then uh, my wife has no umbrella up there. So one of these days I'll get around to buying a second umbrella. Anyway, I got out of here fairly early, but not very early. And uh, of course I destroyed the knife that I was almost to the handle sanding point. And I did manage to uh, get it off, but it is ruined as far as uh, putting a wooden handle on. And the reason is I, I accidentally cut into this a little bit with the bandsaw. So there's no fixing that. I mean, I could, you know, if I had a milling machine, I could lay this flat and then mill a sixteenth off of this whole thing on both sides and make it look nice, but I don't have a milling machine. So I think what I will do is uh, do a paracord wrap. Um, you know, it's a... I mean, I put a lot of work into this, and the blade come out perfect. The etch, my logo come out perfect. And, uh, God, I hate to waste a, a blade that I've taken this far. So I think I'll wrap it with paracord. But I am going to get some thick black leather lace about a quarter inch wide, maybe uh, uh, 3 30 seconds thick, wrap it, and then do my paracord wrap. I will drill a much, much bigger hole back here. I think I can, yeah, I know I can drill it because if I can cut it with my bandsaw, I can drill it. Okay, so that's one problem I've been thinking about. I kind of have a remedy for it. It's not a complete waste. Uh, Arrows, Dinner Skinner, I have sanded up to uh, 180. Reds, sanded up to 180. Doug's, if he wants it, I have 
a new one cut out. I got some dicum on it, and the uh, reason uh, I have the dicum is so I could scribe my center line on this, so I can mark my drill points and uh, my bevel lines. I'm letting the dicum dry. Uh, I'm going to continue making it whether he wants it or not. And uh, I sent him an email saying he's already paid me. I won't say how much, but uh, he's paid me. And the amount that he's paid me, uh, if he wants this knife with the desert ironwood and the mosaic pins, he can have it for what he's paid me. And if he wants his money back, that's that's fine. I mean, it uh, more than fine because I'm not able to make what he wanted. And that was the agreement. So uh, I'm trying to either, you know, give him this knife at what he's paid, which is less than I would probably, probably would probably charge another 25 or 30 bucks for it than what he's paid because of the desert ironwood and the mosaic pins. But I screwed up, and uh, if he wants the money that he's paid back, I absolutely understand, and we're still friends. <laughs> so got that cut out. I've got the Caddo sanded up to 180. And I got Jesse's neck knife sanded up to 180. And Eric's neck knife sanded up to 180. So uh, I made some real progress and it's only one o'clock and I'm not quitting. As soon as this dicum dies, I'm going to uh, drill the holes for the handle, and then I'm going to uh, scribe all my lines for the bevels and stuff like that, and then I'm gonna be uh, grind the bevels on it and uh, try to get it up to uh, 180 as well. Cause that, that's a, when I get to 180, that, that is so much easier when I go from 180 to 220, 320, 400, and so on and so forth, because I stop at 60 grit on that. And uh, to get it from 60 grit to 180 on these is just a huge jump. I go from there, I go to 120. From the 60, I go to 120, and then I go to 180. I'm thinking about getting rid of 180, getting rid of 120, not just throwing them away, but trying to go from 60 grit to 150. If I can go from 60 to 150, it will be a little bit more work, and then from 150 to 220, that'll eliminate, eh, you know, two, three hours of sanding. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to try that. Okay, that's enough of me thinking out loud. I did get a lot done today, and uh, I'm going to get a little bit more done. And today's Saturday. I don't think I'm going to do any more when I get the bevels ground on this. And uh, that sanded... I think uh, that'll be a heck of a long day for me, and I'll call it, call it a day. So I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday. I'm going to, you know, I, I come out here. This is a hobby. This isn't a job, so um, I don't call it working on Sunday. I call it coming and enjoying my hobby on Sunday. So I'll be back tomorrow.